In this video, we will use model coverage to test a controls application and use formal methods to uncover unreachable model elements in the design. The state flow chart shown here is part of a larger engine controls design and controls the fuel rate in a gasoline engine. We're interested in testing the completeness and correctness of this control unit. One way of testing this unit is by creating a test harness that exercises the design. This model broadly contains the signal builder block and the test unit, which in our case is the control logic. The signal builder block will contain the test inputs for a control logic and each signal group represents a unique test case. We have the option to manually create our test cases in the signal builder block or we can import functional test cases from an Excel sheet, for example. In order to import test cases, we can specify the file that contains our test data in a specific format and select the test cases that we want to import into the signal builder block. We can now use these imported functional test cases in the harness model and obtain coverage for our control design. For this, we can first use the coverage analysis settings and select the coverage metrics that we want to perform the analysis for. We can then simulate our design under the imported functional test cases and obtain a coverage report. A quick look at the coverage metrics in the summary tells us that our existing test cases don't provide full coverage to our control logic design. These results can be viewed on the model as well using color codes and we can see how certain transitions in red in the control logic have not been covered. We have two options here. To manually create the test cases that will account for the missing coverage or to use Simulink Design Verifier to automatically generate test cases that will satisfy the missing coverage objectives. We will first log the existing test cases from the harness model and save them into a mat file. Simulink Design Verifier can leverage these existing test cases while generating the new tests. In order to do this, we can use the options for test case generation in Simulink Design Verifier and specify the files that contain the existing test cases. We are now ready to generate the new tests. Once test case generation is complete, we can view the generated test cases in a new harness model. In order to combine all our test cases, we can also merge the two harness models together. We will now simulate the control logic with all the test cases in the combined harness model and obtain a coverage report once again. This is the coverage obtained by the functional test cases, while this is the coverage obtained from the Simulink Design Verifier generated test cases. And finally, this is the combined coverage for our control logic design. By viewing the results on the model, we can see how Simulink Design Verifier has helped increase coverage in our control logic by automatically generating test cases for us. However, we still have two objectives in red that have not been satisfied. This means that we have either over-specified our design for the control logic or we have an incorrect design specification. Using requirements traceability, we can now trace back from this objective to our requirement and revise our design to eliminate this untested design element. In summary, we can create a test harness from our design import functional test cases, and analyze structural completeness using model coverage in Simulink verification and validation. Using formal methods in Simulink Design Verifier, 
we can then extend our test cases in order to increase model coverage, detect model or design errors, and validate requirements at an early stage of software development.